Hi, my name is Trainmaster04 and today I will be reviewing and operating the brand new Lionel 3 rail O scale Norfolk and Western J in the American Freedom Train paint scheme. Let me first start off by giving you a brief history about the American Freedom Train as well as the Norfolk and Western Class J steam locomotives and then from there I'll give you a brief information on the stats and facts about this model. So what was the American Freedom Train? Well in short the American Freedom Train was a consist of 26 cars that were led by three steam locomotives that toured across the country and the cars were filled with artifacts that led from the beginning of or the founding of our nation all the way to the present day. And the train itself was basically to celebrate the bicentennial of our nation. As stated earlier, this train was pulled by three steam locomotives across this nation. And it was pulled for over a 21 month period starting from April 1st, 1975 to December 31st, 1976. And over 7 million Americans were able to visit the train during its tour of all 48 contiguous states. Tens of millions more stood trackside to see it go by. Now, as stated, this train was pulled by three lo steam locomotives and that was due to basically stationing it across the US. For example, one locomotive took care of the East Coast, another the Midwest, and then finally another on the West Coast. This was so that the locomotives could be easily switched out and also be much better to maintain the locomotives while in operation. Now, you may be wondering, how did, the, how did the organization of building the American Freedom Train choose the special locomotives to pull it? Well, something that the most railroads did was actually hold um, a competition against themselves on trying to see who can paint a, one of their best locomotives in the most beautiful paint scheme. For example, this model was, was, is painted in a what-if scheme if the Norfolk and Western actually painted one of their J-class steam locomotives in the American Freedom paint scheme. Now, take note that the Norfolk and Western never did, but other railroads such as Southern Pacific, the Reading, Pennsylvania, and New York Central were contenders in this competition. Now that you have a better understanding of what the American Freedom train was, let me get a little deeper in the class of locomotive that you see right in front of you. Now, the J-class type steam locomotives were built by the Norfolk and Western Railroad, meaning that the Norfolk and Western built it in their own shops, like a lot of other classes of locomotives. It is said that these types of locomotives were so well balanced and so rigid that these locomotives were capable of going over 100 miles per hour, and, but still very powerful and capable of going up their 2% grades in, their, in the mountain regions of Virginia. Now, they added streamlining on this locomotive because this locomotive was intended for heavy passenger service, but still efficient enough in the quality of time that it can make on each route. So that's why you see this bullet nose streamlining around the locomotive. Getting a little bit more nitty gritty into the specifics on the road number, number 611, this locomotive was built in 1950 and retired in 1959 and is designated as a 484, meaning the wheel arrangement. And also, this specific road number is actually still in existence over in the Virginia area. Recently, it has been restored about five years ago, and re also recently, it has, been, it has done an excursion run in, on the Strasburg Railroad. Now, I do want to take a minute and actually 
uh, say that I am not an expert on Norfolk and Western uh, Railroad history, nor on the Jays. So for those out there who may be watching this video and actually know a whole lot more than me, please give me grace on my knowledge is very small, pro probably compared to yours, since I am in an area that is very small on railroads. Now let's get a, now that you have a better understanding of the history behind the class of steam locomotive as well as the American Freedom Train, let's get a little deeper into the statistics of this model. This locomotive was recently cataloged in the 2019 Volume 1 catalog and engines started showing up on doorsteps in the late summer of 2019. In total length, this locomotive has a length of 28 inches, and as a result, this locomotive can only operate on 054 curves. This locomotive can also be uh, controlled by via four different ways. The first way is through the Legacy Cab 1 controller. The second way is through the new Bluetooth system, which is now standard in almost all Legacy locomotives. The third way is through the cab one control system. And finally, the fourth way is through the through a transformer, otherwise known as conventional tr control and some track. Now take note that two through th the options two through three, which are the Bluetooth, cab one and conventional mode will not grant you all of the features on this locomotive. Some of the features on this locomotive include a fan driven smoke unit, a whistle steam smoke effect, which I will show you when this locomotive is turned on, a ash pan variable glow effect, flickering firebox, as well as a cab light when the locomotive is standing still. Now that you have a better understanding about what this locomotive has to offer, let's take a closer look at the molded in and separately applied detail around and on this locomotive. Starting at the front of the locomotive at the pilot area, we first can see a hatch that can be opened to then reveal a scale dummy coupler. Now this scale dummy coupler can actually be replaced by a dummy O-gauge coupler, so then you can actually double head this locomotive. And also it can then be shut as simple as that. Looking on both sides of it, we have some molded in steps leading up to the uh, walk running boards on the locomotive. Above the steps we have a separately applied coupler cup bar. Above that we actually have part of the streamlining effect on this locomotive as well as some uh, molded in air vents on both sides and right next to the air vents we actually have the beginning of the separately applied handrails that run the length of the locomotive. Behind the handrails, we, have, we can see the beginning of the steps leading to the running boards, as well as the white pinstriping on this locomotive. Looking above the pilot area, we can first see a separately applied grab iron right here that curves around the bullet nose of this locomotive. And also, we can see two lighted number boards and a headlight right in the center. Looking above the curved dome on this locomotive, we can see that we also have some separately applied metal ridges on top of the locomotive. And also on both sides, we have separately some more separately applied detailing on marker lights on both sides of the locomotive. Now, again, they do come on when the locomotive is in operation. Taking a look down the side of the locomotive, we are first greeted by the skirting on this locomotive which is painted in the patriotic colors of red, white, and blue. Looking below that, we have one of two cylinders, as well as the beginning of the eccentric rods and side rods of this lo on this locomotive. In the middle of the cylinders, uh, uh, cylinder, I should say that there is a builder's plate on it, which states, which has the letter J, indicating that this is a J-class locomotive. Looking above the running boards, we have another legible builder's plate that describes where the locomotive was actually built, when and where. Past that, we have the, we can get a better view of the handrails that run along the side of the boiler on this locomotive. Behind that, we can see some of the uh, throttle assembly rod 
on the side of the locomotive, which again is separately applied, and also get a better view of one of two marker lights. Looking farther down the boiler, we can get a better view of how much detail is on this locomotive. For example, starting at the bottom, we can get a better view of the white wall driving wheels on this locomotive, as well as the side rods that are, that are attached to the driving wheels. Above that, we have the powered reverser unit, which is separately applied. Above that, we can get a, again get a better view of the side skirting on this locomotive. On the boiler itself, we can get a bit, we can also get a better look at the uh, separately applied throttle assembly on this locomotive, as well as some molded in detailing such as the steps leading up to the top of the locomotive. Looking at the firebox and cab area, we can first see the trailing truck at the bottom, which has both molded in and separately applied detailing. Above that, we have a separately applied pipe work. And above that, we have the ash pan, which on this locomotive does have the ash pan variable glow effect. Above that, we have some more molded in detailing on the firebox area as well as some steps that are molded into the body, which leads up to the running boards on this locomotive. Above the running boards on this locomotive, we can see some molded in steps as well as some more molded in detailing, and also the end of the throttle assembly and the grab irons on this locomotive. Getting a better look at the cab area, we can first see that at the top of the cab near the roof, we have a separately applied grab iron. Below that, we have the cab side windows, which do have clear plastic inserts in them, and also a molded in ledge for the crew. Now, speaking of the crew, we have two hand painted crew figures, one for each side, and also a separately insert or window insert for this locomotive, which does open and close if you have a fine toothpick. Yeah, there we go. Looking at the back end of the locomotive, uh, looking at the bottom, we can see the locomotive, locomotive end of the IR drawbar, which connects to the tender receiving end of the locomotive. Looking towards uh, more above the cab, we can see the cab floor right here, as well as inside the, sep the uh, back head of the locomotive itself, which has hand-painted uh, gauges and knobs. Also, we can get a better look at the fireman and engineer inside the cab. Also, we have two clear plastic inserts for the two cab, rear cab windows and also two separately applied handrails on each side of the cab. Taking a quick look on the fireman side of the locomotive, as you can tell, it's more or less the same as the engineer side but there are a few notice, noticeable differences compared to the engineer side. For example, on the fireman's side, the bell is actually positioned underneath the streamlining behind the pilot, but, but noticeable from this side of the locomotive. Besides that, about everything else is positioned around the same way as the engineer side of the locomotive. Taking a look on top of the locomotive, towards the front, we can first see that we have some molded in detailing in these two little squares. Past that, we have the smokestack. And just to remind you, this locomotive is equipped with a fan-driven smoke unit. And in order to put smoke fluid in, that, in the smoke unit, you just pour the smoke fluid directly down the stack. Past that, we have another rectangle cut out that has a separately applied detailing. And also we have these four little circles, which I believe are the caps for the sand dome. Getting a better angle, we can first see past the, these, four little, these four little circles, we have a larger rectangle area. And inside of this rectangle area, we have four hand painted pop-off valves. Past that, we have another flat circle area, which is represented as the steam dome on this locomotive. And past that, we have another separately applied detailing piece. But let me take a minute and actually explain what this piece is. As stated earlier, this locomotive also has the whistle steam smoke effect, which means that a jettison of smoke will come out of the whistle or behind the whistle every time you blow the whistle. Now, how do you actually 
fill up the smoke unit with smoke fluid. Well, instead of actually pouring smoke fluid directly down the hole underneath the whistle in this case, Lionel was able to turn this little piece into a cover for the fill hole in this locomotive. So, if you do have one of these models, or if you do purchase one of these models, this is where the fill hole for the smoke unit for the whistle steam is, at, is located. Looking past the smoke fluid hole fill cap, we have the hand painted separately applied whistle, and on the cab roof we have two opening and closing separately applied air vents. Now let's take a closer look at the molded in and separately applied detail on the tender. Starting at the front of the tender, we can see that there is a load of both molded in and separately applied detailing. To start off, we have the tender infrared drawbar that receives information from the locomotive infrared drawbar. Down below, we have two molded in steps. Above that, we have some more steps that actually lead to the tender platform. Next to the tender platform, we have two separately applied grab irons. And also in the inner area of the tender, we have loads of doors, molded in doors, and other, separate, and other molded in detailing. Looking towards the side of the tender, we have a beautiful clear and crisp paint scheme with the United States shield symbol the continuation of the red and white striped Freedom Train stripe that we saw earlier on the streamline skirting on the locomotive, and also a bit of rivet molded in de detail for a air tank. And looking down below, if I tilt the, lo the locomotive's tender, you can see the trucks have a good amount of molded in detail, and the wheels are paint are painted with white stripes or otherwise known as white walls. Looking on top of the tender, you can see that in the coal bunker area, there's actually real little bits of coal simulating a coal load on a real locomotive. Past that, you can see a little separately applied ladder detail that goes up into the coal bunker area and also the parts of the sides actually curl inward, giving it the streamlined effect. On the tender deck floor, you could actually see that there is molded in detailing for rivets, and, past the, and also close to the end, there is a tender water hatch, and underneath that hatch is the volume knob for the tender speaker, in which on this tender, it has one large speaker to produce all of the legacy rail sounds that this locomotive has, uh, has to offer. Looking at the back end of the tender, we can first see that there is a operating electrocoupler on this locomotive tender. Besides that, we have two separately applied ladder stanchions that lead up to the tender deck, rear tender deck. On the back panel, we have a separately applied ladder that goes up to the top tender deck as well as four separately applied grab irons. Right here, we have the rear marker light, as well as some legible facts or measurement facts on how many tons these, this tender, as well as how many gallons this tender can hold, and some more legible reading right here. Now that you've seen all of the detail on this locomotive, let's now have some fun by powering up the locomotive and I show you some of the sound features that are included with this legacy locomotive. This is the dispatcher, do you copy? Go ahead, over. Stand by for track orders. Okay, watching the signals, out. Now that the locomotive has started up, let me now show you some of the sound features that are on this locomotive. For example, here's the whistle, and also look towards the whistle area because you should be able to see a jettison of smoke or steam coming out of it. Here's the bell. And also, here is the blowdown sound. 
the water fill up sound. My water's full. Hell. Roger that. Oh. And also the coal load fill up sound. Here is the crew talk dialogue sounds, but before I play them, let me just make a note by saying to those who may not like the crew talk sounds because of their prototypical uh, nature, uh, please don't be a stick in the mud a bit, because uh, there are people out there that do uh, like the crew talk sounds and think that they're pretty much fun, in which that's the basis of this hobby. So, without further ado, here's a sampling of the crew talk sounds. Our inspection is complete and we're ready to depart. Over. Clear to proceed east from where you stand at track speed. Over. Clear east on signal indication. I'll play one more. Ready to make our pull. Permission to occupy the main hour. Negative. Sit tight for a minute. We've got some traffic to clear first. Understood, Al. Now that you have heard all of the sound features that are in this locomotive, let's hook up, let's hook up some cars behind this locomotive and have some fun by running it around the layout. Now, before I get this train rolling around the layout, I just want to point out that I actually do not have a collection of American Freedom Train passenger cars, nor do I have a lot of Norfolk and Western scale freight cars. So today, instead, I've put together a collaboration of UP reefers, as well as some other scale cars, and also, I don't have a Norfolk and Western caboose, so the next best thing I have is a Western Maryland caboose. Now, without further ado, let's get this locomotive down the line.
Commands are applied. We're marking off. Well, it is about time for me to end this video, but before I do, let me answer the two questions on what is my personal opinion about this locomotive, as well as how much does this locomotive cost and where can you actually purchase one of these locomotives. To start off, the MSRP price for this locomotive is right at $1,500. Now, you may be able to get a better deal if you go through your local hobby shop, if they have one in stock still, or you could go to Charles Rowe and trainworld.com in which they should still have a few of these in stock. I will leave a link in the description for both of those websites and also I'll leave a link in the description for some more history about the American Freedom Train. Now let me discuss or take a bit of time to actually give you my personal opinion on this locomotive. My personal opinion on this locomotive is that it's a wonderful locomotive. It's fun to run, it looks great going down the track, and it's just got a clean, crisp paint scheme that I wish actually was on a Norfolk and Western J so that we can actually possibly be able to see some historical photos. But let's get back to the model itself. In the model, the sounds are just very authentic to the real 611, and the smoke units in the locomotive, both the stack and the whistle, are just phenomenal. They produce so much smoke that it actually fills my whole basement and to me that's just wonderful. It is now time for me to go and end this video and from this I hope you actually enjoyed this product review while watching me show you all of the features and run this beautiful Norfolk and Western J around my layout. Now before you go, please press the subscribe button so that you won't miss out on any other future product review videos and other train videos in the near future. And also, if you enjoyed this video, please press the like button. That would be nice. And my name is Trainmaster04, and I'll see you next time in the near future.